Hi, I'm Chase with Houston Frogs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a fruit fly culture. Uh, now every week we're going to be making about 550 fruit fly cultures here at Houston Frogs. Uh, that's about three stacks of these. Uh, as you can see, my uh, partner here, Sharon, is helping me out with making these. Wouldn't be able to do it without her. Uh, we're going to start out quite simply with one third cup of dry media. Uh, we're going to be selling these in 28 ounces, which makes 10 cultures, 64 ounces, which makes uh, 24 cultures, and then uh, 128 ounces, which makes uh, 48 cultures packed. So you can get those on the website. Now, you're going to simply add two thirds cup of boiling distilled water to this media. Uh, now, it's very important that this be boiling water because the boiling water is going to help to pasteurize the media. So just in case any kind of fungal spores float into there, just in case you have a fly that's flown into your house and has gone into the media, anything that may be in there, it's going to cook it, essentially. Uh, it's going to kill everything in there and make a nice uh, sterile to semi-sterile media for your new uh, flies to lay their eggs in. Now, once you've mixed that up, uh, and of course you want to be homogenous, you don't want to have any patches in there, you want all the media to be touched by the boiling water to cook it. Um, once that is mixed up, it is going to set. It's going to become uh, decently firm to the touch, almost like consistency of oatmeal. Should be able to turn it upside down and nothing's going to come out. Then you're going to put a very small pinch of active yeast, live yeast culture in there. A lot of times it'll go by baker's yeast if you go to the store. Now, it's very important to put that yeast in there because that yeast is actually going to colonize the surface of the media, helping protect it from other types of fungi that are harmful to the fruit flies that could crash your culture. A lot of different types of mold spores, uh, like if you ever seen a culture that has uh, black mold in it, green mold in it, things like that, uh, this is going to help coat the surface. So sometimes you'll see these cultures that have like a white fuzzy film on the surface. That's actually the yeast fungi itself. The yeast fungi also helps to start break, breaking down this media for the fruit fly larvae, making it easier for them to digest. So it's very beneficial to the fruit flies to have that active yeast in there. Now after that's done, we're just going to quite simply take one of these paper plates, like what Sharon's doing, uh, and we'll accordion it and stick it down into the bottom of the media. You can also use Excelsior, that's one of the most popular things in the hobby to use. All we're doing here is creating some extra surface area and some extra uh, places for those adult flies to get off of that media, which will increase their survival and will make it to where we can have a nice big boom of flies that aren't overcrowding each other as much. Now, after that's done, we're going to take a lid and we're going to put that lid onto this culture. You want to do this while it's still very hot. The reason for that being is that if anything gets into the culture, so far as a fly that flies into your house, you don't want any uh, native flies laying their eggs into these cultures. I've seen oftentimes where people will leave these cultures open and they'll just let these cool down like so. And then even when they seed it, they won't see any flies in here because the eggs will already have been laid while they weren't looking. And then they'll have flying flies that come out, uh, which we definitely don't want here. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to open up a culture and have flyers all over the place. Um, now, years ago, we did have some issues with that, uh, especially when we had different people that were working for us, helping us to make cultures. But now, we haven't had that issue, I think, the last two years. Um, now, the lids, another important thing is to use these cloth lids. Uh, there are some on the market that just have little tiny holes uh, in the tops. Now, those, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of issues in the hobby with uh, flying flies getting into those as well. Now, whether it be that they mate through those tiny holes in the lid or whether it be that they're able to squeeze through, that's uh, not exactly verified at this moment, but we do know that those uh, lids with the tiny holes in the top, people have had a lot of issues with those uh, flying flies getting into them. We also had a lot of issues with sometimes with CO2 buildup, the larva will crawl to the top, they'll get into those tiny holes, they'll block them up, and that whole cultural crash from CO2 poisoning. That's why I really prefer these vented lids. Now, after the culture is made, you want to let it sit for approximately one to three hours, uh, depending on the temperature of your house, depending on, um, well, a lot of different factors, ventilation too. Like, for instance, we stack these, and so they're going to take longer to cool down. 
after this is at room temperature to where it's cool to the touch, like this one I have over here, you're going to want to seed with your flies. Now it's very important that you get your first booming flies. You don't want to get the ones that are at the end of their life, uh, the ones that are already dying out, that are about three to four weeks old. You want to get the ones that are just starting to boom out. Now the reason for that is because for one, you're going to get the strongest flies. They're going to boom out the fastest. Say for instance that you start with fruit flies like ours, they're going to boom out about 11 to 12 days. Uh, if you continually take the first flies that boom out at 11 to 12 days, your fruit fly cultures are going to continue to boom out at 11 to 12 days. If you take the older flies that may have been weaker, that have patched out uh, at a later date, it may start taking you 13, 14, uh, sometimes 15 days for these to produce. Uh, and we'll talk about production just a little bit here too. Now, are you gonna take is your cool down culture. You're going to take these fruit flies, which we're working with Golden Logaster here. I'm going to work back here so that I'll accidentally put them in some of these other cultures we're working with. Contamination is always something that we're worried about here. We're always trying to prevent. And you're going to put these flies in like so. Now, I put in about 30 flies. Uh, you can put in anywhere from 20 to 40, and that's perfectly fine. But you just want to have a few to where those can start laying their eggs in the culture. Now you're going to go ahead and date these fruit flies. You're going to mark down the name of the fruit flies, and then you're going to go ahead and stack those in your room. Now, another issue that people are always looking at is mites as well. Now, whether people uh, will admit it or not, every single fruit fly culture you can imagine is most likely going to have mites. It's extremely rare that somebody doesn't, but you're always trying to keep ahead of them by trying to get rid of those fruit fly cultures that are dying out, they're a month old, and by continually keeping uh, different dates segregated so you're not having, for instance, fruit fly culture that's four weeks old that you're about to throw away with one that's brand new. And I'm about to show you that around our room. So let me show you real quick our fruit fly room. So. Over here, we have some cultures that are three weeks old. This is the plant which the Malagaster have already been booming out for about a week. And this is the plant which the Hydei are just about to boom out. These are going to start booming out about 19 to 20 days. Again, really depends on the temperature of your house. Uh, if you have it warmer, they're going to boom out faster. If you have it cooler, like we have here about 70 degrees, they're going to take a little bit longer. Uh, over here, we're going to have our cultures from last week. Now, those cultures, uh, you can see that the Hydei, you're not going to see hardly any larvae at this point. They're very tiny. Uh, they're just starting to hatch out. Uh, you can see the uh, smaller flies, Malagaster, things like that, are going to ha start having larvae at this point. Then, if we're going over here, these are the ones... Uh, they're just about to boom out or starting to boom out uh, that are about two weeks old. Now, these fruit flies here, you can see again, the smaller fruit flies are starting to boom out. These are 11 days old. You can see all these pupae along the sides. See, and these are just starting to boom out. Now, if you notice, the way that we stack these, we stack them in a pyramid fashion. And that's to not block off the vents. If you block off the vents, then you're not going to have any kind of ventilation. And then you can have CO2 die off very easily. Uh, you'll see the maggots will start coming to the top. Uh, they'll try to get oxygen. They can't get oxygen. And all of a sudden, you'll just have a die off. That's one major issue that a lot of people make. Now, you can keep these on uh, uh, mite paper. You can keep them on diatomaceous earth. Just make sure that you're not stirring that up because it is bad for your lungs. Uh, but we do not do that here. Uh, instead, we actually sterilize the shells after each batch of fruit flies, again, to prevent contamination. Uh, over here, you're going to see we're clearing out uh, the four-week-old fruit flies. Normally, these shelves are full. This is where the new cultures that we're making now are all going to go. Anyways, guys, I hope that helps you out with fruit flies. Uh, if you have any questions at all, or if you'd like to try out some of our uh, new types of fruit flies that we've introduced into the hobby, like the Dumbo Wings, Midnight Black Mel's, Stubby Wings, etc., etc., uh, feel free to visit us at HoustonFrogs.com. 
Uh, until next time, this is Chase with Houston Frogs, and take care.